What's happening YouTube? Welcome back. This is Rob with Extreme Boating. Today I'm addressing a mod that by no means has been innovated by me. And to be honest, I don't know who the hell actually has innovated it for these particular boats, the Bass Tracker Classic XL. But this video applies to the Bass Tracker Classic XL and any other boat that has an oddly shaped windshield like ours do. So, I don't know what the other boat's windshields are going to be made of. Our particular ones are either made of Lexan or acrylic. I'm going to believe it's acrylic based on the way it smelled as I was cutting it. it sounds funny, but it's true. Um, it did have that kind of acrylic paint style smell. So, I'm going to assume acrylic. Anyways list of items that you will need to perform this mod you're gonna need um, some some thicker painters tape I wouldn't go with the thin stuff definitely go thicker uh, a thin style sharpie or a thin point fine point whatever you want to call it a okay this next one uh, is actually what you're gonna be using to cut the windshield I've seen a lot of different recommendations on it. This was the first time I ever did the mod. First time I've ever messed with acrylic. Didn't know how it was going to turn out. I was actually very apprehensive about it for the last year or two. Even though I saw a lot of people had done it. Uh, I was actually very nervous to do it. And then yesterday I finally got it in me to cut it. So what I actually found works the best. Well at least the best for me. I know how to use it very well. I have a pretty steady hand. A Dremel 200 with a cutoff wheel. That will be the next item you need. Uh, 120 grit sandpaper. And then as a bonus, you are going to screw up. I screwed up. You get a little careless. Uh, you get a little sloppy as you're doing it. I am very guilty of that. In some of the things I do, especially when it comes to visual items like a windshield acrylic apparently transparent items painted surfaces it's all fixable at the end of the day you're going to need some rubbing compound a cordless drill uh, with the the buffer style attachments this is all bonus stuff this is just in case you screw up though you may actually need it so it's good to have it and not need it better than needing it and not having it so just a recap fine point sharpie masking tape painters tape you know uh the green frog style tape or the blue 3m style tape works dremel 200 or some kind of oscillating attachment uh i've heard a hacksaw works well as well some kind of diamond bit attachment crap. I don't know. The Dremel 200 with the cutoff wheel worked fantastic for me. And then, yes, I screwed up. I did screw up. You may actually even see it in some of the pictures that I'm showing in this video. Uh, up on the upper right corner, you will see like a, a scratched area. And I did that while I was taking down the edges and, you know, kind of evening everything out. It's okay. I screwed up. You'll probably screw up too. And you know what? That's okay. As long as you got the stuff to fix it. Like I said, just get some 120 grit sandpaper. Get a, get like a three pack of that. Should be plenty. Um, if you don't have rubbing compound, polishing compound, um, buffer and or, you know, a, a buffer style attachments for a cordless drill, that's okay. Um, we can always take that down. We can always take down any additional scratches with 400 grit or even 800 grit sandpaper. The finer the grit, uh, the more clarity you get, the finer uh, the scratching becomes. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, things turned out really good. Like I said, it was my first time. And yes, I screwed up a few times. You'll notice I keep harping on that. That's because I'm here to tell you that it's okay. 
And if you screw up, it's okay. Things do happen. And everything is fixable. Just remember that as you're doing things. Everything is fixable. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Things wound up working out really, really well. Um, I'm, you know, now that pre-spawn season is a few weeks away, uh, I just figure I might as well get the boat game time ready. And I know it's been a long time since I made some videos, but uh, I have been a little busy with life. Got myself a new place. Gonna be moving here in the next couple weeks. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably be down for making videos once again. But I figured it was a good time to upload something. I was kind of in the modding spirit uh, for the boat because that windshield just kept pissing me off the way it was shaped. And the way it kind of was obstructing my view. I'm a short guy. I'm about 5'5". Five five. Anyone within that size range will notice and tell you probably the same thing, which is why a lot of people have done it. But just know it's not a very complex process. Take your time. Just make sure you have the right tools for the job, which I've already listed down a couple times. I'll leave it in the information section as well. Big shout out to my girlfriend for getting me this hat right here. Love it to death. I've actually been wearing it since she got it for me. I love how it has a hidden compartment in it. I don't know the brand of it. Uh, it may be uh, part of one of the stickers that I took off of it. I think it said BART Bridge, B-A-R-T, Bridge. Kind of like Bay Area Rapid Transit Bridge. I think it's all one word. Google's your friend, honestly. You may be able to find it. They got a bunch of different um, patches. Like this one's Delta. It's got fishes. That's why she liked it. She kind of supports my bad habits sometimes. But regardless, uh, yeah, she her birthday's coming up. Happy birthday, baby. I don't even know if she watches my channel, but I can hope. <laughs> Anyways, moving forward, uh, there are some videos that I do have planned down the pipeline. Nothing crazy, nothing major, um, but they are easily a few weeks, two months out. Um, I'll probably be making a video breaking down exactly how you take down the the ECU mod or you know the 60 horsepower conversion mod. Probably be doing like a step by step because some people have asked for it. Um, I'll be showing you how to relocate your paddle and your Bass Tracker Classic XL if you want some more space in the uh, in the back compartment or you know the the, the storage compartment right behind the seats. Uh, maybe showing you uh, actually definitely I think the next video will be the Garmin Force Troller and kind of a review on that. Ever since I fixed the bow plate, if you watched the very last video I uploaded, I've only taken the boat out once. I did a review video on it. Didn't like the way it turned out. So I'm going to go ahead and redo it. Wait to redo it until I take it out to the water next time. Uh, definitely very pleased with it. Big shout out to Lee Means over at Garmin for hooking me up with that troller. Thank you so much, bud. I haven't forgotten about you. I will make that video. Anyways... If you enjoyed my content, like, subscribe, comment, all that other fun shit. Thank you so much, guys. This is Rob with Extreme Boating. Have a great rest of your day. Tight lines. I'll see you soon.